Here we're going to prove the classic result that the sum of the reciprocal of the prime numbers diverges. So it's more well known that the harmonic series, in other words, the sum of the reciprocal of all of the natural numbers diverges, but it turns out if you limit that sum to only reciprocals of primes, it also diverges. We're going to do that using these three inequalities which we will prove. So the first one says that the sum k equals 1 to n of 1 over k, in other words, the nth partial sum of the harmonic series, is less than or equal to this product over all primes, which are less than or equal to n, of 1 plus 1 over p, and then the sum as m goes from 1 to n of 1 over m squared. So let's get to proving this first inequality. And I'll start by noticing that if k is between 1 and n, then we can write k as either a perfect square or a perfect square times something known as a square-free number. And a square-free number is a number that is not divisible by any perfect square at all. In other words, it's going to be a product of distinct primes. So what that means is we have k equals m squared. That would be the first case. And that's where m is less than or equal to the square root of n, kind of depending on the size of k or k is equal to uh, p1 times m squared, where p1 is some prime which is less than or equal to n, or k could be equal to p1 times p2 times m squared, where p1 and p2 are both distinct primes less than or equal to n, or so on and so forth. So k could be a product of r different primes that are all less than in as well. Great. Now we're going to take every term from our harmonic series, 1 over k, and rewrite it depending on if it's a perfect square, a single prime times a perfect square, the product of two distinct primes times a perfect square, or so on and so forth. And we're actually going to change equality to an inequality so we don't have to worry so much about the bounds. So we have the sum k equals 1 to n of 1 over k. So that's going to be less than or equal to this sum as m goes from 1, over, 1 to n of 1 over m squared. Good. So that would be the case where k is a perfect square plus the sum m equals 1 to n of 1 over p times m squared, where p is a prime less than or equal to n. So that would be the case when k is a single prime times a perfect square. And then I think you can see where I'm going. So this is going to be the sum m equals 1 to n of p1, p2 less than or equal to n, and then 1 over p1, p2 m squared, where p1 and p2 are distinct primes and then plus, so on and so forth. But now that we've done this, and since we have a finite number of these sums, given that there are only finitely many primes that are less than or equal to n, this right-hand side of the inequality will factor as follows. So I can just go ahead and write that this is equal to the product as p is less than or equal to n of 1 plus 1 over p, times this sum, m equal 1 to n of 1 over m squared. So let's notice, if we were to expand this out, it looks a little bit like this. We have 1 plus 1 over p1, where that's maybe the first prime less than or equal to n, times 1 plus 1 over p2, all the way up to 1 plus 1 over pr, where p1 to pr are our complete list of primes that are less than or equal to n. And then notice that's being multiplied to 1 over m squared, where we've distributed that through every term of the sum. But now notice, by choosing the correct number of 1s and the correct primes, we can retrieve all the values of k here. So notice if k is 2 distinct primes times m squared, then what we'll do is we'll take this m squared, multiply on 1, all the way up to here where we'll multiply by p1 and p2. And then if we need k to be just p1 times m squared, then we'll take this 1 over m squared, multiply by all of these 1s, but in the last case, we'll multiply by 1 over p1. Okay, so hopefully that gives you some kind of feel for this product of the 1 plus 1 over primes. Okay, so we've established this inequality, now we're going to move on to the second inequality. 
So let's start with the left hand side. We have this sum m equals 1 to n of 1 over m squared. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll take the first term out of this sum. So this is going to be equal to 1 plus the sum m equals 2 to n of 1 over m squared. And then I'll replace the denominator of this fraction with something that is smaller, thus making the fraction larger. So this is going to be less than 1 plus, now we have the sum m equals 2 to n of 1 over m squared minus a quarter. So m squared minus a quarter is smaller than m squared, which makes 1 over m squared minus a quarter larger than 1 over m squared. So now I'll multiply both parts of that fraction by 4 to clear the denominator in the denominator. So here we have this is 1 plus. Now this is the sum m equals 2 to n of 4 over m 4m squared minus 1. Now I want to notice that 4m squared minus 1 factors as a difference of squares 2m minus 1 times 2m plus 1 which really tells us that maybe we can do a partial fraction decomposition. And we can do a partial fraction decomposition. So I'll leave that to you guys to check the exact details, but what we get is that this is equal to one plus, now we have the sum m equals two to n of two over two m minus one minus two over two m plus one. Good. So now maybe I'll go ahead and bring this and that down to here so we can kind of start over. So now we have this sum m equals 1 to n of 1 over m squared is going to be less than 1 plus this sum m equals 2 to n of 2 over 2m minus 1 minus 2 over 2m plus 1. Good. So now what I want to do is write out a bunch of terms of this series so that I can get an idea for what's going on here. So notice here I'm going to have 2 over 3 is my first term because I plug m equals 2 into this I get 4 minus 1 which is 3 and that's going to be minus 2 over 5. So that's what I get for the m equals 2 term and then plus 2 over 5 minus 2 over 7. That's what I get for the m equals 3 term plus all the way up to 2 over 2n minus 1 plus minus 2 over 2n plus 1. Good. But notice that a bunch of stuff cancels. So here this 2 fifths cancels with this 2 fifths. The 2 sevenths will cancel with something that comes next. And then the 2 over 2n minus 1 will cancel with something that came before. And all we're left with is this 2 thirds and this minus 2 over 2n plus 1. So that means we have this thing is equal to 1 plus 2 thirds minus 2 over 2n plus 1. Great. But now that's going to be less than whatever we get if we just disregard this term. So in other words, we forget that we're subtracting 2 over 2 n plus 1, and this is going to be less than 1 plus 2 thirds, which is 5 thirds. So now looking at the extreme left and right hand side of the, this inequality, we see that we've established our second tool. Now we're going to move on to our last inequality. So starting with the left hand side, we have the natural log of n plus 1. Now I'm going to rewrite it so that it looks like it is an integral being evaluated. So in other words, I want to write this as the natural log of x evaluated from 1 to n plus 1. So the natural log of 1 is 0, so this works out. And this also shows us that we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 to rewrite this as the integral from 1 to n plus 1 of 1 over x dx, given that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Now I want to take this interval 1 to n plus 1 and break it into pieces and then sum over each of those pieces. So I'm going to rewrite this as the sum from k equals 1 to n of the integral from k to k plus 1 of 1 over x dx. Great. Now we can use the fact that 1 over x is a decreasing function well, at least it's decreasing for positive values, but that's what we have, our positive values. So that means we can replace this 1 over x with 1 over k if we pick up an inequality. 
So one over K is the largest value of one over X on the interval K to K plus one. So I can make this an inequality and I have the sum K equals one to N of the integral from K to K plus one of one over K DX. But now that's just the integral of a constant. So we get the length of the interval times the constant, but the length of the interval is one. So that just gives us this sum as k goes from one to n of one over k. But now again, looking at the extreme right and left hand side of this calculation, we see that we've established this inequality. Now we can move on to our main goal, which is showing that the sum of the reciprocal of the primes diverges. And we can do that by noticing that the sum over all primes of one over P is the same thing as the limit as N goes to infinity of the sum over all primes that are less than or equal to N of one over P. Great. And now we can start using these inequalities. So I want to start with this last inequality, but instead of writing the natural log of n plus one, I'm going to write the natural log of the natural log of n plus one. So I have natural log of natural log of n plus one. So that's going to be less than the natural log of this nth partial sum of the harmonic series. And here we use the fact that the natural log is an increasing function. So now I'll use this first inequality. So notice that this is less than or equal to the natural log of, now we have this product over all primes less than or equal to n of one plus one over p. And then we have this sum as m goes from one to n of one over m squared. But we showed that that was less than five thirds. So I can just go ahead and bring that five thirds out here. Okay, great. Now the next thing that I wanna do is use the fact that e to the x is bigger than x plus one if x is bigger than zero to say that this term right here is less than e to the one over p, okay? And then from there what I can do is say that the whole thing is less than the natural log of five thirds plus the natural log of the product over all of these primes less than or equal to n of e to the one over p. Where again, I use this inequality involving the exponential function to rewrite this one plus one over p as e to the one over p, keeping in mind I had to introduce an inequality. Okay, good. Now the next thing that I wanna do is use the fact that the natural log will turn this product into a sum. So that's gonna give me the natural log of five thirds and then plus we have the sum over all primes less than or equal to n of the natural log of e to the one over p. But the natural log and e to the one over p will cancel each other out and we just have one over p. Okay, so now let's look at the extreme right and left hand side of this inequality we've built. And now we can use this to finish off the problem. So notice that I can move this natural log of five thirds across, and that's gonna tell me that this limit as n goes to infinity of the sum over all primes less than or equal to n of one over p is bigger than the limit as n goes to infinity of minus the natural log of five thirds plus the natural log of the natural log of n plus one. Good. But now we know that as the argument of natural log tends to infinity, the natural log tends into infinity. So what that tells us is that this term right here is zooming off to infinity, which tells us this entire limit is infinity, which tells us that this goal series diverges. And that's a good place to stop.